The Essential GUI mod was basically founded by the coder who was actually learning to code and this was basically a passion project as he learned to code and there's some really nice features in here. For an example you can view the compass position which you're facing which in this case we are looking at the north direction. You can also see the separate XYZ coordinates to see where you're looking. There's also a really nice config system in the menu which allows you to change each and every aspect of the menu itself like the transparency, the color of the background of the menu and a few of the different option settings and the locations on screen. As you can see there's some pretty nice little features on the heads up display like when you attack mobs you can see a mob health bar and a picture of the actual entity itself as well as this when you look at blocks and pieces in the actual game itself you can view what they look like. On the right hand side of the screen over here you can see when you equip any item in game which is in the armor category or a shield or sword or any kind of weapon really it will display on the right hand side which is part of the hood to show the combat item. You can also have separate key binds which you can change which toggle the smooth lighting settings and also turns up and down the gamma levels to actually make everything more viewable in game. The enchantment potions mod adds a bunch of different status effects and potions which mirror the exact same effects as their respective enchantment effects which stack. So if you have an efficiency 5 potion and you use an efficiency 3 pickaxe, this will actually let you mine with an efficiency level of 8, which is actually pretty crazy that you can now use these potions to stack the typical effect which you could get before when using an enchantment table. This is a really nice little mod because it adds a few different potions for the following enchants. Efficiency, Depth Strider, Feather Falling, Frost Walker, Knockback, Lure, Silk Touch and Soul Speed. This next little mod is a really useful small utility mod which I think is a really great addition to the game. It's basically called Cat Eyes and it's a single player and server mod which works on both and it allows you to set a configurable keybind which is defaulted to the V key to allow you to illuminate caves and see underwater. It's basically a toggleable version of the night vision effect which you can already get from potions although this actually lets you press a key to turn it on and off on demand which makes the game a lot more easy to play. You can change it in the options in the miscellaneous tab near the bottom of the controls menu and this allows you to customize it to your liking and toggle it with any keybind that you wish. At night time it's really nice to see those pesky skeletons which are basically my kryptonite. A while ago I featured a paintings mod and it was really well received as people really liked that mod. If you're tired of seeing the same exact paintings over and over again on repeat in the vanilla version, well you can now see a huge collection of Terraria based paintings coming from Relogic's favourite and main title that they've made. There's a huge big collection of 1x2, 2x1, 1x1, 2x2 and 4x3 paintings. There's an available painting count of 108 different random paintings so if you have a decent enough gallery or house build there's a lot of different variations for you to mess around with and see what they look like. If you're following a few different mod creators, you'll be aware that a lot of us do really like the mods from Young. He has quite a few different mods and one of these which I'm personally featuring right now is the Young's Better Dungeons mod. In the background, the footage you're going to see is from the trailer by the mod creator himself, which I've credited in the bottom left corner if you want to check out his footage and his other mods. Of course, the link below will be down there if you want to download the mod. Now, this is a complete redesign of Minecraft's dungeon sets, which changed the dungeons into a never before seen style which really improves the gameplay. The normal dungeons in the game are pretty bleak right now and we're all waiting for a dungeon update to make things a little bit more interesting than just a small single room underground with a bunch of spawners because they're not really very exciting which is why a lot of people tend to download roguelike dungeon mods. You'll find things like catacombs, fortresses, spider caves and undead structures underground which you can explore 
plunder and take down and even seize for your own. There's some really cool RPG exploration potential in this one and just letting you see the footage in the background gives you a little bit of a taster of what you can expect to see providing you actually locate them in the world. The reason why I chose to use the promotional footage from the mod author himself is because it has some really nice camera angles to show you close up the features of the mod in a much better way than I can show you. It's also really cinematic which shows the best of the mod possible and I really want to show off this mod because this is one which I believe really does upgrade the game. I think the vanilla dungeons are something which has needed a rework for a long time and we've just got a caves update which was one of the other features which we wanted to be updated so I'm sure there will be a dungeon update on the horizon soon. But from now until then whilst we wait you can try out this mod. It's really interesting to see underground the generation here when the other blocks are completely removed so you can see how the dungeons generate. Hoe Tweaks is a little useful utility mod for the Forge mod loader which makes the hoe a little bit more of a useful tool. For an example adding features like breaking pumpkins and melons much quicker and adding a shift right click mechanic when you crouch to a few different types of hoes in game including the stone and the diamond one which allows you to till the ground in a much larger radius than you can manually do so in the vanilla game. If you use the stone one it creates a rather small patch of land whereas if you use the diamond one you can till basically large sections of fields to make a giant tilled farmland. This I believe is a really underrated mod which I personally think is actually a hidden gem. It's the More Villagers mod which actually enhances the game through the addition of brand new large scale village structures in multiple different variations which are dotted around the world throughout the world generation system. If you explore you can now expect to find huge giant villagers with multiple different substructures and houses in them as well as more formal buildings which you can go around and explore. You could basically own one as your own house house or just use it to build inside too. Now when you go around these at this early stage of the mods development there's no actual NPCs and it's not actually scripted into the pre-existent vanilla villager system so there's no villagers going around doing jobs or doing anything you'd expect from a normal village. It's basically just for display purposes only right now as it's in its infancy but it doesn't really have many mod downloads which was really surprising to me because I thought this was a really nice mod. If you wanted more drastic variations of the village structure game and things to be more interesting like these mushroom houses and a few different other variations like these fortresses which split the mountains and land together as a kind of keep and wall away from mobs and enemies then you should really try out this mod because it adds a few different variants of structures which just populate your world and make it a little bit different. Uranium is a priceless natural resource and is something which was part of the legendary industrial craft 2 mod. Well with the uranium mod for fabric you can expect to get a huge set of uranium utilities and resources. If you farm enough uranium you can now get a sought after powerful uranium armor set and set of tools which I'm showcasing here. They're extremely powerful and do very high damage to enemies and mobs and they add a bunch of status effects to the player when you wear them. This will give you many effects depending on how many parts that you're wearing at once however the more armor parts that you wear the slower you will get so there is some upsides and some downsides to this mod itself but it adds a new mineral to the game and also a new ore block. This project is an experimental one and it's called Out of the Shadows and it's one of the most coolest projects which I've actually seen. It's actually called From the Shadows and the mod adds powerful and dangerous monsters that spawn everywhere in the overworld. You can get some really cool things like this gigantic claymore sword and armor set which I've equipped on the player. The other cool thing about this mod is it adds two main mobs right now so far. One of them being the Necromancer which is animated just like an illager with spinning books that fly around it and also the other one which is the giant and powerful dangerous monster mob which will actually fight the necromancer. The necromancer has blue flame particles coming off him and he will basically cast some of the same attacks that a lot of the different magical illagers will. It really creates an awesome 1v1 fight between these legendary mobs.
The Axolotl Armor mod is a mod which runs flush with the 1.17 caves, adding Axolotl gear which you can get by obtaining a bucket of Axolotl and in a smithing table combining it with a leather helmet. These combined make the Axolotl helmet which is a nice visual vanity item. We have the regeneration effect on us when we apply this to our helmet slot and we're also immune to mining fatigue, giving us plus 20 armor value, 2 armor toughness, 1 knockback resistance point and 275 armor durability. We can also repair the item in the anvil with a bucket of axolotl.